You ever notice uh, the sci-fi movies or shows and there's some lab, like a mad scientist lab. It's it's uh, over-engineered and shiny and just, uh, it's you know, uh, unnecessarily dramatic, right? Um, is someone goes crazy in a, in a lab coat or maybe someone catches fire and is, oh, it's working. Well, that's not a job. That's not, at least not a job I've seen, right? Like, you know, you can have a job like that for Intune or, or Entra and, and, and you could say, you know, must be comfortable to having 12 VMs open and, and, and five stale cups of uh, coffee around. And uh, you got to figure out why this app won't install on this machine with this assignment. No glowing buttons, no uh, emergency lights, just Teams notifications going off and conditional access emergencies what yeah, someone would someone would you know apply for it it's not as not as theatric but it's still some steve weiner here from getrubix.com and yesterday we took a look at user versus device assignment in intune specifically with policy and I knew this would kind of be a hot topic, and it certainly is all the feedback is you know well what about the apps and that's exactly what we're going to talk about today well, someone always catches fire or just explodes in one of those labs. I mean, that's just that's a given. You can't you can't get around that. Get Rubik's solving for the modern workplace. All right. So yesterday we took a look at assigning policies to uh, users versus devices and uh, kind of what the difference would be there and the effect it would have. And uh, just to kind of show you where we ended on that, um, for example, here we have a policy where we're blocking the Windows Store for our user Bob here. But if we switch users and go over to, let's see, Morty Smith, Morty should be able to use the store with no problem versus a policy like Bluetooth or BitLocker is going to apply to the whole device. But now it's time to talk about the applications, which is arguably more critical out of the two. Um, there's a few ways to look at this, right? So we have to break our conversation up into apps at provisioning, meaning with autopilot, and then apps just assigning and deploying throughout the runtime lifecycle of the device. So let's start with provisioning. And for this, I want to go back to a diagram I made a very long time ago. I mean, it's Windows 10, but you get the idea. Okay, so this kind of represents the autopilot, you know, flow. I know there's more technical charts available for Microsoft, but, you know, I like this one. I like the pictures. So basically, we know what happens in autopilot. User signs in here, right? Uh, username, password, and then you are into the ESP. And this gets broken down into three phases, right? So you have the preparation, which is where the device enrolls, and then you have device and account setup. And device setup is where uh, the, this ESP is going to wait until we've assigned certain things. Cutting over to an actual enrollment status page setting, uh, these are where you would select the apps that get blocked um, if they're assigned to the device. Notice I said device. So if we were to choose Adobe Acrobat, 7-Zip, and our Microsoft 365 apps, those are the three apps that ESP will hold for until it proceeds. But bear in mind, they are in the device setup, so they have to be assigned to the device. And the reason for that is because in most cases, we block account setup, or if we're doing pre-provisioning, we're not doing account setup. And anything assigned to the user is not going to happen until later, after we sign in, right? So it really depends on the experience here, but it creates a very clear framework for us to say, listen, if I want uh, the device to be blocked from the desktop until certain apps are installed. Those apps have to be in the device assignment category, right? Anything assigned to the user level, right, is going to have to wait until after sign in. This also helps us create a really good kind of persona mapping that I've always done, meaning, you know, something on devices might be considered, you know, baseline for regardless of what department the user is in, right? If everyone in my organization gets Office, gets Adobe, gets Chrome, well, those can be device assigned and be locked in the ESP because they're going to come down first. And then more specific apps, maybe Visio, Project, some kind of, you know, uh, Photoshop tools, that can be user assigned, right? And it could be required or available, it doesn't matter, but the user won't have access to them until they sign in because how 
how could they? They're assigned to that user object, which it won't be there <laughs> until you sign in. So that kind of makes life easier in terms of provisioning. Ah, but what happens when the device is already in this state and we want to push things out to it? Do we want the app to appear automatically? Do we want it to appear for all users on the device? Do we want the app to just be here available in company portal uh, for certain users? This brings us to the second part of the conversation. Assigning an application to a user or device group doesn't have the same impact uh, at runtime that it does at provisioning, right? It's not gonna throw anything off. It's not gonna break anything. It's gonna come down to uh, your preference for behavior. Right. Do you want an app to install when a user logs into a machine like that app to follow the user around? Do you want it to be available for that user? When it comes to available applications, this is geared towards users, right? You want an app to be available for a user. Um, and this way, based on the group they're in, right, they'll see that app in the company portal and they'll be able to self-service and download it. Now, here's a very interesting question. When an app is available for a user and they download it, will other users on the device see it? Well, let's check it out. All right, so we're gonna go to our Firefox application and I'm gonna go to assignments and available for enrolled devices. I'm going to add my YouTube user group, which is just Bob. Remember, Morty isn't in that group. So YouTube users, Firefox should become available for him once we assign this, give or take a few minutes. Okay, so we have Firefox available now for Bob, and let's download it. We're gonna install it. Okay, that's installed. We got Firefox for Bob, but here's the question. If we switch users now back to Morty, are we gonna see Firefox? Why is that? It's here, but it was only available for Bob. Well, luckily there's a simple answer to that. It's because Firefox installs as system. It's very similar to what we said yesterday about policies having user scope and device scope. You know, the assignments are just that, they're assignments. It's in tune determining where it's gonna send this app. So if it's available, right, for, the user group with Bob in it and Bob downloads it, it's still a system context app. Bob is triggering that install and the system gets it. So in order to restrict that, it would have to be something that installed in user context. So you'd really have to think about that and, and where that would be beneficial. You know, in a lot of cases where it's just a one-to-one -one, like user with their laptop, it doesn't really matter because you just wanna make the app accessible for that user group and once they install it, they have it on there, right? They're not gonna share their devices. So it's just important, you know, this is all planned out. That's why the design is so important. Just to show you what I mean, when we go look at that device here in Intune and we go to managed apps, you're gonna have an option here to see um, the user or the device without the user, right? Or you could see Morty on here. So it's interesting because you're only going to see apps that probably apply to either all users or all devices show up as installed. But if we go to Bob, this is where you'll see Firefox installed, but it is uh, system wide. So if you go to device without user, you'll only see things targeted at devices, but it can be a bit deceiving. Like I said yesterday, there's no hard, fast rules to this. I just kind of wanted to show you the behavior so we understand it a little better. So if I did have to give some blanket answers, here's what I'll say. If you want something provisioned during autopilot, it's device. If you want to make apps available to different uh, departments in your organization, user makes sense. And just keep in mind, anything user assigned is going to happen after provisioning. And when it comes to the runtime of the device, remember that just because it's user assigned, right, doesn't mean it's not going to install on the whole system. You have to look at the install context. So things to keep in mind. Let me know what you're doing. I got a lot of feedback about this. Is there anything more you want me to clarify about these things? Because I would definitely do another follow-up since it's a big topic and I'm trying to make it small here. So we'll be seeing you.